skeletal system uh, is comprised of the following um, parts, some of which we won't spend a lot of time on. Uh, skeletal system, excuse me about that, is composed of bones. Uh, the connection of bones, a lot of people think of joints as like a thing, but really uh, it's the connections of bones. Uh, also in a joint is ligaments, cartilage. Here's a term that people get confused a lot. Ligaments join bones together. And uh, we'll take a look in class at a couple things that will help you remember that probably. Uh, the skeletal system's organs are bones, ligaments, and cartilage. Ligaments are technically connective tissue, and so is cartilage. Uh, a bone is an organ, and we'll talk about why. Even though it's made of bone tissue, the whole bone itself is an organ. And then, of course, joints where two bones come together. The functions of the skeletal system, there are five. Here's a skeleton with some of the parts you'll need to know. Uh, number one is for muscles to attach and help it move. Number two uh, gives you your shape and structure. Much of what you look like is determined by your skeleton. Of course, you add fat and uh, muscle and things like that, but if you think about the structure of somebody's face, the structure of their uh, the width of their shoulders, their hips, uh, how tall they are, this is pretty much determined by your skeleton. And number three, protection. This is the one most people think of right away when they're thinking about uh, what some functions of the skeleton are. Uh, protect internal organs. You'll notice that the important organs are all very well protected. Okay, uh, your chest and your heart and lungs are protected by this cage of flexible bones. Your brain is protected by a non-flexible cage of bone. Uh, the fun one of the functions to make red blood cells, and uh, we'll talk. We've talked about this a little bit before. Uh, the stem cells for red blood cells are found in the bone marrow, and. Uh, that could also, actually, we probably should just say blood cells because white blood cells called B cells are also made in the bone marrow. Uh, and the last one, and the one people forget a lot, is the job of the skeleton is to score minerals like calcium and phosphorus are stored in the bones for use later. Um, and we'll talk later on about what calcium and phosphorus are used for in the body. Bones. Uh, have very there are varied kinds of bones. The one we're going to talk about is a long bone. There are also irregular bones, flat bones. Flat bones would be like in the pelvis. The sternum is a flat bone. Okay, irregular bones like your vertebrae. If we talk about long bones, uh, long bones, the ends of the long bone is called the epiphysis. Uh, and they're made of something called spongy bone with lots of struts, arches. Uh, it's not really spongy, but it looks spongy. The middle of the bone, also called the diaphesis, is what's called compact bone. It's very hard, uh, very dense bone tissue. Also what you find a lot in bones are canals. Uh, Haversian canals and Volkmann's canals, that's the names of them. And if you think for a minute, why would bones have canals in them? Well, you have to be able to get blood vessels and nerves in and out of the bone. And you're like, well, why do I got to get nerves? Bones don't really feel any pain. Well, they do. If you've ever broken a bone, you know that. But we'll take a look at a skull, and you'll see lots of openings in the skull for nerves to pass through and around uh, through the bones to get to parts of your face and things like that. Also, if bone marrow is making blood cells, there has to be a way for blood to get out. And so you need blood vessels to go in there. And we have a, on the next slide is a very blown up picture of the inside of a compact bone with these canals running through it for blood vessels and nerves, blood vessels coming in. And then um, just a quick view of what the inside of a bone would look like if you could see it. Uh, bone growth. This is a fetal skull. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, long bone growth in a bit. The, the, uh, bones develop from hyaline cartilage in the long bones. 
and from membranes in the flat bones, such as the skull here. Here's a fetal skull, uh, and there are the major bones of the skull develop as such. They start out as a membrane, and bone is deposited in an outward fashion, like so, from the ossification center out. And so this fetus is stopped it's because this uh, fetus was aborted. It stopped growing bone outward in such a fashion. If the fetus would have been born, it would have been born with a soft spot here where the bones aren't all fused together yet. Uh, and there's a really interesting reason for that. And I'll let you think about that. And we'll talk about it in class a bit. So anyway, uh, bones in the hands, feet, and the skull are not fully formed until up to five years after birth. Not to five years after birth. Uh, and then after puberty, of course, the bones aren't ever really fully developed until uh, you're done growing. And that happens after puberty. We'll talk about that in a second. So here's a picture uh, from your textbook about bone growth. And what you need to understand is that bones grow from a model of hyaline cartilage. Okay, so uh, we're talking about an embryo. So this sucker, this, uh, this, sucker, this uh, baby or embryo is less than three months old. And uh, it, the first thing you see in an arm bud, for example, is hyaline cartilage. And then in the middle of that is bone starting to be deposited and laid down and replacing cartilage. In a fetus of six months old, or six months to three months, there's actually two deposition centers for bone, two on the outside in the, di in the epiphysis, and one in the diaphysis. And this one is producing compact bone, and these guys are producing spongy bone. Now, after you're born, what's happened is the bone is fully grown to the ends, and fully grown here, not fully grown, but at least has grown here. And then between is what's called the epiphyseal plate or growth plate. And it's that growth plate that's still cartilage. And as you're growing, this both sides of the cartilage are laying down bone. So this cartilage is making bone here and making bone here. And the bone is growing longer. It also deposits bone, bone is also deposited on the outside of the bone to make it wider. What we don't understand is how this happens pretty much all at once throughout your body, but it does. And the influences of human growth hormone and other things we sort of understand, but not to the greatest extent. The other thing to note about bones is that bones are always being remodeled. Bones are constantly changing due to stresses. This doesn't mean stress like, oh, I'm so stressed, but stress is on them. And calcium levels in your body. So, for example, if you're lifting a lot of weights, your bones will get stronger where your muscles attach. And that means they'll get thicker. And so... Um, this here, this side of the slide, is talking about just bones growing, how cartilage grows and bone is laid down and bone is laid down and cartilage grows. But on this side, it's talking about remodeling, where if you're, if this is a bone, okay, and you're lifting weights and the muscles pulling on this bone a lot, it's going to get thicker there. The bone is actually going to grow. Um, in some places, then though. Where you're not using bone so much, it may be worn away a little bit. Okay, this happens a lot. Uh, people that uh, astronauts go into space, and one of the things they worry about is their bones losing their density because they're in, they're in no zero gravity, so their bones lose their uh, essential density because uh, bone gets resorbed by the body. It's the calcium is used for things and not replaced because it doesn't need to be. So a hormone called parathyroid hormone, or parathormone, uh, stimulates things called osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are bone-laying uh, cells that lay down bone. And when those osteoblasts get trapped, get trapped, they convert to regular bone. And I'll show you this in a minute. 
Okay, so on here there is like literally bone growing cells laying down bone. Uh, osteoclasts are cells that eat away bone where it's not needed anymore. So in a um, in an astronaut, the osteoclasts are produced are doing way much more work than the osteoblasts. So on this hyperlink here, um, as the quiescent phase means the phase where it's not growing, here's osteoclast ate away the bone. Okay, and then osteoblasts produce more bone. You call cement line, and as this bone gets covered up down here, it becomes bone, and the osteoblasts move that way, essentially. Okay, uh, the last part of this uh, is on fracture repair. And on this slide, uh, just a couple of things to point out. Uh, first of all, here's a broken humerus. And you see the green stick fracture nature of it. Here are the pins and plate that were put in to help that heal. On this side, you see a, um, a diagram of a knee joint. And you can see right here where the arrow is, or I'll put a line on it, the growth plate. Okay, where the bone is not yet formed. We'll talk a little bit later about how x-rays work in class. You can see the growth plate on here. This is an MRI. An MRI of a knee joint, not only do you see the uh, humor or the femur here and the tibia down here, but you can also see in the black ligaments and tendons that are holding the knee joint together. And that's why they do uh, soft tissue. For soft tissue, they'll do MRIs. But anyway, in a fracture repair, a fracture of any break in a bone is called a fracture. Okay, so you might hear somebody say, well, do you have a fracture or do you have a broken bone? Well, they're the same. A fracture is the same. In here, uh, what will happen first is the bone breaks and you get this inflammatory response we'll talk about later. And the outside of the bone, the tissue grows back over it and traps inside this bloody uh, hematoma is basically a blood clot. And uh, then as the blood is there, uh, kind of in the middle of the bone, what happens is you start getting new blood vessels forming through here. And you start getting what's spongy bone trabecula, or pieces of spongy bone are laid down in there. Now this happens where you have compact bone too. And then as time goes on, okay, Remember now, the whole time takes about six weeks. You really can't speed this process up by drinking a lot of milk or anything. So it takes time to regrow blood vessels and things like that. You form what's called a bony callus. A callus is any spot in the body where you uh, get more tissue than you had before, essentially, or more stuff. And so you have this bony callus of spongy bone. And the spongy bone, of course, is easy to produce because you get this sort of interlinking network and then after time that fills in with compact bone. Okay, so you get this and of course you see that it's swollen here. Okay, your body's reaction to a stress is to lay down more than you need and then over time osteoclasts will wear that away and make it smooth again. 